Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 3, the periodic table. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 3.2 periodicity, part 4 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to explain the increase in the successive ionization energy of an element. Next, we're going to deduce the electronic configuration of an element and its position in the periodic table based on the successive ionization energy data. So for the linear outcome of H and I, we're going to deal with that in part 4 of the video, which is in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So successive ionization energy. So successive ionization energy means that we're going to remove an electron from an atom 1 by 1. Okay. So we're going to remove it one by one by one until all the electrons in the atom finish. Okay, so in general, the successive ionization energy will always increase because each subsequent electron that is being pulled away or being removed from an increasingly more positive ion will require extra work. For example, let's say if you have a magnesium gaseous atom and you want to remove for the first electron, the energy that is required is only 736 kilojoule per mole. But if you were to continue removing electron from the magnesium, you're going to see that when you remove the second electron, so you're going to take from magnesium gases, magnesium gases ion, and it's going to become magnesium 2 plus gases ion, which is the second electron being removed, the energy is going to get higher. Okay, And the similar situation you can see here. So let's say if we have carbon, so carbon has six electrons. So you know that the SPDF notation here is going to be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Okay, and it has four valence electrons. Okay, so you can also use your high school method, which is 2.4. So you can see that it's going to have two in the inner shell and then four as a valence electron. So as what you can see in the carbon here, in order to remove the first valence electron, the energy required is only 1806. Now, you want to remove the second electron. So the energy will keep on increasing, which is 2352. And then you want to remove the, the third electron. So the energy required will be 4619. And then you want to remove the fourth electron. So the energy required is 6221. Kilojoule per mole. Okay, and now the valence electron has already finished. So you want to remove the fifth electron. So the fifth electron comes from the inner shell, which is closer to the nucleus. And because it is closer to the nucleus, the force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus is much more stronger. So more, more and more energy is needed to remove the fifth electron. So that is why, as what you can see here, it's going to be a huge leap. Okay, perbezaan yang sangat ketara dari segi energy from 6,000 to 37,000. Okay, which is very very high. And because of this, um, you can say that when you see there is a large increase in the successive ionization energy, you know that it is a situation when it is a removal of the last valence electron and the removal of the first core electron dari dalaman, dari core electron tersebut. Okay, and because of these properties and these differences, we can determine the electronic configuration of the valence electron easily. So, in order to understand more about this, let us look into the example. So, in order to determine the electronic configuration, we have two methods. So the method number one is by determining the ionization energy ratios. And the method number two is by determining the differences in ionization energy. So let us look into the example. So for example one, we are given five successive ionization energies, which is in kilojoule per mole for atom A. And this is given as the table here. So we need to determine the general electronic configuration of the valence electron for A. And next, we also need to determine the group number of A in the periodic table. 
So in order to do this, um, I'm going to do the method number one first, which is the energy ratios. So in order to do the energy method ratios, we need to divide the second ionization energy with the first ionization energy. So IE2 divided by IE1, you're going to get 1810 divided by 576. So the energy ratio that you're going to get is 3.14. And then you're going to repeat that again, where you're going to do IE3 divided by IE2. So when you divide IE3 with IE2, which is 2740 with 1810, you're going to get 1.51. And then you're going to do the ratio of IE4 to IE3. So IE4 to IE3, you're going to get 11,600 divided by 2740. And lastly, you're going to get 4.23. Okay. And you're going to repeat that again for this ratio here. And lastly, you're going to get 1.30 here. So from this ratio, you're going to see that the energy gap between 4 and number 3 here is the largest. So what are they trying to imply is that the three first electron here is the valence electron and the highest uh, energy value here refers to the core electron, electron dari orbital dalaman ataupun dari shell di dekat dengan nucleus. Okay, so you can say that since the energy gap between IE4 to IE3 have the highest ratio, we can conclude that there are going to be three valence electrons that are present. Okay, so you can imagine it to be like one, two, and three valence electrons. And therefore, you can conclude that the valence electronic configuration is going to be an S2 and P1. Okay, and the first, second, and the third electron that are removed are from the energy, are from the same energy subshell, which is the outermost or the valence. Okay. And then the fourth electron is removed from the inner subshell, hence, it requires higher ionization energy. And this is um, validated by the energy ratios here where four energy ratio of ionization energy four to three is the highest and this implies that they're going to be because they have three valence electron so they are in group the in okay so they are not in group three they are in group 13 because for ionization energy, we can only do this method for S and P orbital. So the D orbital is not involved. Okay, so when you have three valence electron, you need to add up with 10. So it's going to be group 13. All right. Now, similarly, which is the same example, you can use the second method, which is finding the energy difference. So you can uh, find the differences between IE2 with IE1, which is 1810 minus 576, you're going to get 1234. And then 2740 minus 1810, you're going to get 930. And then IE4 to IE3, 11600 minus 2740, you're going to get 8860 kilojoule per mole. And then lastly, you're going to get the energy difference for IE5 with IE4. And then you're going to get 3430 kilojoule per mole. And from this energy difference, you know that this one is the highest. So similar as before. So you can say that since the IE4 minus IE3 have the highest difference, you know that there are going to be three valence electrons that are present. Okay. And because of they're going to have three valence electrons, so the more logical response for valence electronic configuration going to be ns2 and p1 and this refers to the first second and third are removed from the same energy subshell which is at the outermost shell and the fourth electron is removed from the inner subshell and it requires a higher ionization energy similarly go to number 5 here okay but we only look at the um first 
electron in the inner subshell. And as a result, because it has three valence electrons, therefore they are in group 13. Okay, as simple as that. Now we're going to move on to the example number two. So for example number two, we have four successive ionization energy in kilojoule per mole for atom X. So we need to predict the group in the periodic table, and then we need to write the complete electronic configuration of X if it belongs to the second period. So similarly, you can use method one or method two. So let's say if you are using method one, you're going to find the ratios between IE2 and IE1, IE3 to IE2, and IE4 to IE3. So once you get the ratios, you will get the 845 going to be the highest. If you are using the method number two here, you're going to get IE3 to minus IE2 going to be the highest as well. Okay, it is consistent. Okay, and from this data here and from this calculation, you can see that since the IE3 to IE2 have the highest ratio, we can conclude that there are going to be two valence electrons that are present. Okay, so there only be two valence electrons that are present. And then the next two electrons comes from the inner orbital. Okay, and this one is the nucleus. Okay, so to remove the first electron here, only need a small amount of energy. The second electron, small amount of energy. However, when we wanted to remove the third electron, it's going to be a really, really high energy because it's removed from the inner shell. Okay, and from the calculation that we get, we know that we're going to have two valence electrons. So we know that the valence electronic configuration is going to be NS2. And therefore, because we have two valence electrons, we know that it is in group 2. And the third electron are removed from the inner subshell, and hence it requires a higher ionization energy as mentioned. And we know that since the X is in period number 2, okay, the electronic configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2. Okay, so um, even though our valence electronic configuration is ns2, but since they mentioned that our n here, which is our principal quantum number, will affect the period, so when it stays equal to 2, then, then we know that the valence electronic configuration will not be 1s2. It needs to be 1s2 and 2s2. Okay, and this is the full electronic configuration and it is located in period 2. Okay, and as what you can see, it's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons. So it's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons. So 4 electrons have 4 successive ionization energy. Okay, so hope this is clear to you. Then for the last example, the graph below shows 5 successive ionization energy in kilojoule per mole for atom Y. And then we need to state the group of atom Y and provide the reasoning. So we know that we have five electrons, and the first electron will have a very low ionization energy. Second electron, still very low. Third electron is still very low. But when it goes to the fourth electron, it will have a very, very huge gap. Okay? So you know that your first three electron is in the outermost orbital. Meanwhile, the last two here will be in the inner shell. Okay? And that is why to remove the first electron is easy, to remove the second electron is easy, to remove the third electron is also easy, but in order to remove the fourth electron, it very, very, requires a very high energy since it comes from the inner orbital. So from here, you can know that you have three valence electrons, and from the, valence, the number of valence electrons, you can determine the group. So because it has three valence electrons, and hence it's going to be group 13, not group 3. Okay, because ionization energy cannot be determined for the orbital using this method. 
So for your syllabus, you only be dealing with S and P block for ionization energy. Okay. This one is not your focus. Okay. So that is why we need to add up with 10. So you know that it is in group 13 and you can give the reason because it has a large energy gap between IE3 with IE4 and the fourth electron as mentioned comes from the inner shell and more energy is required to remove the fourth electron. Hence, you know that it has three valence electrons and it is in group 13. Alright? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!